Hello, family members. How are you today? Uh, I'm obviously a little cold. <laughs> We're having a weird, like, cold snap here in Florida. A March cold snap. It's very strange. Like, really. So, you know, Floridians, we have thin blood, so I've been having to bundle up. <laughs> Please forgive the <laughs> wardrobe. Um... But the main reason that I wanted to talk to you today had nothing to do with the cold snap. Uh, it has to do with female athletes and how they've really been at the forefront of breaking down barriers in, you know, sports as far as like homophobia and transphobia goes. And given the vast influence that, you know, athletes have as celebrities that's really really important i think because it helps people who don't know someone that's queer don't know that they know someone that's queer <laughs> um kind of get some perspective on the topic and so um i just i thought that that was worth talking about um in my run-up to recording this, I did do a little bit of research, and I'll be including some links to different uh, sources that, that I looked at uh, while I was kind of researching this in, in the description. Um, but uh, the main thing that I kind of wanted to know was, when did it start becoming sort of acceptable for professional athletes to be openly gay? And... Also, you know, where are we as far as transgender women and transgender people in general in sports? And so looking back on the history of it, and this is actually pretty interesting. I found an article that was published by like ESPN in 1998. So all the information is like really old, but it's really fascinating to read it because it basically shows how there was very little uh, to talk about as far as queer people in sports in, in the period before then, before 1998. And when I started kind of looking into when some of the like more popular WNBA players or the women's national team players start coming out, it's not until like the early 2000s uh, at the earliest and then, you know, really starts ramping up in like the 2010s and today to the point where we have on our U.S. national team, we have, you know, couples who are married, you know, <laughs> like it's actually a topic of discussion whether or not it's okay for players on the same team to date. You know, that's, that's, that's the, where discourse is as far as, as lesbian athletes in professional soccer, at least in America is. And so that's kind of awesome. Like, honestly, if we're at the point where we can have that debate, then I think we're doing a lot better than <laughs> where we were even a decade ago. But, you know, even we were better off then than a decade before that and, and onward. And so I started trying to kind of look into it and see if I could figure out some sort of connections. What it was that sort of started the ability for people to, to start coming out more openly. And, and I think that a lot of it goes back to the AIDS crisis. Um, in the 90s, we started seeing a change in public perception about AIDS. Uh, primarily because there were activist groups like ACT UP that were formed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Socks. <laughs> to <laughs> try to, to battle the AIDS epidemic that the uh, Reagan industry, uh, the Reagan administration was deliberately trying to <laughs> suppress <laughs> any sort of, um, you know, discussion about. Soxy. I don't know that this is going to be all that helpful, buddy. I'm going to have to probably take a break. I'll be right back. Where's your favorite toy? Yes, you love my remote, don't you? You want to eat it? Yes, you do. 
Yes, you do. <laughs> Socks. I think he's settled down enough that I can actually continue. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, back to the Reagan administration. So, I grew up in the 80s. Yeah, I was born 82. And so most of the Reagan administration happened when I was far too young to have any sort of, like, idea about politics, right? And so... I didn't, I wasn't really aware of this. And I, I think that a lot of people my age and people younger than me also are not aware of the fact that the Reagan administration literally did genocidal tactics during the AIDS crisis. Like they took action that they knew was going to cause people to die because they believed that, that it was killing the right people. They were trying and hoping that it would get rid of all these degenerates, <laughs> homosexuals, right? And so, you know, it, that's where we were in the 80s. And in the early 90s, you get ACT UP and other organizations that start targeting public health officials like Anthony Fauci, who you may have heard of, <laughs> um, basically trying to get them to take the crisis seriously. And, you know, establish health care as a right and, you know, get federal funding for treatments and, and you know, destigmatize the disease itself. Because that was a huge thing. People just didn't even understand how you could get AIDS and how you couldn't get AIDS. And, you know, it was, it was, um... Uh, a difficult battle. People had to really, really fight for it. And then there was a turning point in 1997. And several things happened then. That's when the the crisis sort of peaked. And then after that, you know, you start seeing um, AIDS deaths go down. And then also uh, Ellen DeGeneres comes out, right? And so there was a ton of backlash there. But in a lot of ways, she opened the door for people who didn't know gay people or didn't think they know gay people to have some idea that gay people were just people, you know. And so then you get Will and Grace. Uh, and then um, in, the, in 2000, there was a women's sports organization that started an active campaign to end homophobia in sports. And so, um, that's, after that is when you start really seeing it change. And it was primarily people who were like in the WNBA and then like solo athletes from like maybe tennis or, or a kind of sports like that at, at first. And then when we had Abby Wambach on the women's national team and she was such a superstar and she really, I mean, she was an electric player. Like, I got to see her. Ugh. Wonderful. Anyway, so, you know, she was so good. So dominant. So charming. She's a charming woman. She really is. And so butch. <laughs> and so obviously queer. And so unapologetically queer, right? And, and then on her heels, you know, Megan Rapino starts becoming more and more well-known and more outspoken and has in a lot of ways become, you know, a, a sports celebrity, not just an athlete. And um, it's just amazing to see that, that these women sort of paved the way for other athletes to be able to come out and be open while they're actively playing. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to take another break. You watching yourself? Are you watching yourself? Well, of course you stop as soon as, you know, yeah. Of course. <laughs> anyway, before we were so rudely interrupted, um, you know, I just, 
there have been gay male athletes uh, who who have been open, um, but they're fewer and further between than you see in you know women's sports, especially women's pro sports. And I think that's really important. We have to have this normalized to the point where people are just like, so what? She's gay? No big deal. He's gay? No big deal. And I hope that at some point we can do that also with trans people. Now, I uh, have like comfort videos I watch over and over and over again, uh, soothing my anxiety. And one of them is the Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling video by ContraPoints. And she talks about women, trans women in sports and whether or not that's a debatable subject. And she says, you know, it's possible maybe to have a good faith debate about it, but it's complicated. And she's right. Uh, <laughs> athletes, like the top level athletes, have physical advantages over normal average people, even if they're cis. And so there's always an an element of unfair physical advantage in sport. Some of it is how hard people work, how hard they train, but that's not the only thing that is important when it comes to sports. And so it's, I think, a very strange topic to try to unravel because, to, to be frank, you know, maybe some trans athletes might have physical advantages over the average cis person, but, you know, top flight cis athletes will as well. And so where, how do you draw any sort of line? I don't think you can. I don't think this should be necessarily a firm line, you know. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is this mania to try to keep women out of sports or trans women out of sports actually harm cis women significantly because you get cases like, um, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. Mm. I, I, I will, and I'm going to edit this. I don't normally do the, this these days, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to put her name and picture here. She uh, just naturally has high testosterone level that's just normal for her physiologically compared to uh what is considered normal for for females uh you know biologically sexual uh, people whose sex is female not their gender but their sex and uh, she's been barred from doing what she has trained her whole life to do because some number and some paper says that cis women have this level of testosterone, and since she doesn't, then she's not a woman? I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. And she's not the only one. There are multiple cis women who have been harmed by the trans exclusion in sports. And so these trans female athletes that are out there fighting to be included in just whatever it is they want to do you know we forget that trans people are just people you know if you have a group of people some people are going to want to play sports some people are going to want to paint some people are going to want to be fishermen you know i mean it it's just people are just people there's going to be people who want to do anything that there is to do in life and we got to figure out a way to include them and not, you know, go, well, this kind of complicates things. I don't want to deal with it. Let's just pretend it doesn't exist. And so I, I think it's just really inspiring to watch female athletes break down so many barriers for both trans women, cis women, straight women, gay women, bi, pan, asexual, any type of queer woman has so much easier time to find a place for herself in sport now than she did previously. And I think that 
that's also becoming true for men, but at a much slower rate. Female athletes are the ones who are really driving the change. And I also think that part of, of what's accelerating that is that female athletics are becoming more and more commercialized in a good way. Because, <laughs> I mean, let's, let's face it, professional athletics is very commercial. And so, you know, you see more and more uh, women's soccer teams being formed in the United States. There's actually the first ever de dedicated women's soccer stadium in the entire world that was built in America and Kansas. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, you know, I can go, well, I used to go and see the Pride <laughs> play in Orlando. <sighs> like, it's just awesome. And, and because the fact of the matter is, if you like sports, you'll like female athletes playing too, because they're interesting storylines. I love the storylines. You know, that's what makes sports so interesting for a lot of people is the storylines, me included. And so you get these, these cool stories, you know, Caitlin Clark is a great story and all the female athletes that came before her, that kind of laid the path down, helped her be able to have this moment where she's getting this incredible record and people are actually paying attention, you know, like the, the, uh, women's, uh, March Madness. It's actually like the final four is sold out before the men's because people are so excited about this player. And I love that. And while she's not queer as far as I know, you know, she's part of this community of female athletes that are raising the profile of female athletics in general and by extension, queer athletics. So... Well, I'm going to have to hop off of here because apparently I'm starting to shake and I don't want the camera <laughs> to shake too. So uh, if, if anyone's interested in this, let me know. I might make another video about uh, queer uh, athletes because especially women's sports. I mean, I like, uh, I like the Olympics and all gender. All right. I need to. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Have a wonderful week. <laughs> Hope it's not too cold where you are. <laughs> Bye. Ooh, shop separated. Meow, 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 me